Uh, welcome to our first Nesco webinar of 2023. Um, this is episode one, Risk Insights. Uh, so this is actually the first of a series of six webinars we're gonna do spread through the year. Uh, our goal with those webinars is to give you uh, different use cases and aspects of Netscope in 30 minutes uh, each session. So quick and dirty about some stuff Netscope does very well. Uh, and today that is Risk Insights. Yeah, um, risk Insights is, uh, could be a driver to start with your cloud journey uh, or your cloud security journey. Um, and we're going to talk more about Risk Insights, but before we do that, let's introduce our team and exclusive networks who is involved with. Let's go. Um, yeah, first of all, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Dan Wolf. I'm business development manager at Exclusive Networks. Um, I've been here for over five years already, and I um, started out as pre-sales and then went to the business development side, uh, especially for emerging vendors. So let's go is an emerging vendor. Uh, the cloud journey is just at its uh, beginning, in, uh, especially in Belgium. Um, so we have a lot of work to do with creating awareness. So that's also what we do. We do a lot of sessions, vendor agnostics, some vendor sessions like this today, to uh, create a lot of noise, to highlight specific use cases in generally educating the channel and end users. But I'm not alone today. Uh, we also have Cedric with us, our pre-sales for Netscope. So hi everyone, I'm Cedric Tuvola. I'm a pre-sales engineer at Exclusive Networks for about six months now. And I work generally with Next Generation Firewall, SSD and SASE solution, as well as data security solutions. Morning, everybody. I'm Davey. I'm a security pre-sales consultant at Exclusive. I've uh, been here for three years now, focused on the emerging technologies. So uh, you've probably seen a few webinars maybe in the past where we covered some general topics like SASE. Uh, um, yeah, backing up the team here um, for Netscope and then working also on other technologies, of course. Uh, all right, thank you, Davy. Uh, next in our team, we have Yasmin Jacobs, who is our team lead of internal sales, uh, responsible for all quoting, and of course, Davina, who is our marketing guru. Before we're going to talk about risky insights, let's do a quick recap about what Netscope actually does, because it's a lot we can talk about for hours. Uh, so it's a, it's a challenge to just do it in a few minutes with one slide. Uh, but it's important to know for people who don't know Netscope yet or just know the brand Netscope. So Netscope is actually uh, a uh, a cloud platform and it's a native cloud platform that's important to uh, to remember and it's designed to enable organizations to make that transition from uh, your on-prem to the cloud safely using cloud native security controls and the type of controls we're talking about are maybe inline controls like next gen firewall uh, or next gen sorry proxy in the cloud uh, but also api controls um, in that way that you have organizations that can secure sanctioned and unsanctioned cloud services also web traffic, uh, private apps, uh, and so on. Um, but it's all from one single console, and it's important for SSE. It's all from a single console for uh, policy enforcement and very general subsets of policies. Uh, and it's all based on microservices. And why is that important? Because those microservices are uh, very agile, uh, very performant, and they can be added later on if necessary for any security uh, uh, measurements needed. Um, because today um, we talk about uh, data protection, threat protection, but later on, if there is anything new necessary, we can just add that on the security stack. Um, Netscope plays a lot uh, with other players also. Yeah. They can actually integrate with your entire security stack from single sign-on to uh, your EDR or SIEM solution and even threat intel sharing. Uh, so that integration with the ecosystem is also very important for Netscope. Um, and this is all based on Netscope's own um, high-performance private cloud network. It's called Newage. So they are not dependable on any public cloud uh, vendor. They have their own data centers across uh, around the world uh, with very fast um, uh, connections to uh, all cloud applications and to all pops or data centers they have. So the topic today is risk insights. And why are we going to talk about that? Because, that, and like I mentioned before, that could be your, your first touch with uh, cloud security adoption. Um, Netscope was born in the cloud, and it started out as a cloud access security broker, uh, which gives them, from, based on that history, it gives them a head start because they have a lot of information about all cloud applications out there. Um, traditionally, if, if we look at all 
cloud applications being used, we see like 2% is IT-led, right? which means IT manages this, this type of cloud applications like your Office 365 environment or maybe uh, Box Drive for, for um, sh uh, file sharing. But we see a lot of business-led applications who are not sanctioned, so IT doesn't know what is happening with there. They have no control, they have no visibility. Uh, and then we see some user-led applications, more for personal use. Um, and, and that's the problem. All those business applications, we don't have visibility and no controls over it. So that's the first thing we're going to solve with Risk Insight is, okay, what applications are we using? And that's based on data logs. Uh, for our demonstration, we used actually firewall logs, just one day of firewall logs of my own home environment. And that gives you a lot of insights already about every application you're using. Um, so we prefer, of course, decrypted logs because then we have more information. Um, but imagine, uh, like our Netscope customers, if you have an inline next gateway proxy uh, and or the API integration with your SaaS applications, yeah, that gives you an advantage of much more detail and enforcement capabilities. So that's the first one. And then you can say, okay, my, my firewall vendor already gives me an idea about what, what applications I'm using. That's true, but Netscope will give you a lot more detail. And more important, they will also calculate your risk. And this is our cloud functions index we're going to talk about right now and also going to show you later. So the cloud confidence, uh, confidence index is a score that Netscope, Netscope gives your cloud applications. So the Netscope research team uh, has more uh, has information of more than 40,000 cloud applications. So it's a huge database. Um, and they use more than I don't know, they use seven risk factor areas right? like certifications and standards. Uh, Cedric will show that more in detail in the demo. But all these different um, categories we're going to use to to actually make an assessment of how well is that cloud application performing for an enterprise business. A uh, good example would be LastPass, uh, which is a passport uh, sorry password um, manager. Um, if you look at the vulnerabilities and exploits, yeah, they've been breached three times in the last year. So that would give it a, a certain uh, impact on your score. Um, so if there are new, if there are new cloud apps um, popping up in your environment, you will also have an idea about what risk, uh, what risk it gives you. Next is our risk insight use cases. So for this demonstration, we're gonna we're gonna um, try to touch a few of those uh, use cases. These are the ones we uh, quickly identify, but there are other ones also possible depending on your organization. Uh, for this one, uh, the first is actually to see, okay, what do we have? What do we have of applications out there? And is there an overlap? Which means uh, we have our corporate tools who are sanctioned, but we have a lot of shadow IT. Why is that? And that's an important question. Why are people using other tools that you did not sanction? And most of the time, the, the reason is because it's easier and because there's no good alternative or uh, maybe sharing uh, outside your typical SharePoint organization of your, of your company. Um, so this gives you the IT team an overview, okay, we have applications we should actually maybe onboard and that we can control, and other ones we should actually just pull out because it's a huge risk. Um, the other one is many organizations are trying to mature, and right? they are trying to get a certain certifications because they need to be compliant for some reason, um, but are you actually compliant with the applications you are using? Because um, most of them only know what, what they have, the corporate tools they have under control. But if 70% if of your people are using Shadow IT, yet you're not compliant. So that's very important because that gives you an idea. Okay, the apps that you're using is, is a data trace, is that encrypted? Um, and, and who's owning those apps? Who is um, the admins, um, access control, that type of stuff. Another one, and this is more about the outcome of COVID-19, is um, the optimization of your licensing because we bought a lot of collaboration tools, really a lot of those tools. And you talk about Zoom, Teams, whatever uh, whiteboard applications you, you want to you think about. Um, are people using that? So that's also what we can see, how many users are using those tools because maybe you're over-provisioned and you can optimize it uh, because people don't use that tool anymore. And then again, Netscope is a security vendor. So what is my risk? Am I my most exposed risk? Uh, what is low-hanging fruit to fix first um, as a security organization? So this was my intro. Uh, and now Cedric will take over. He's going to show you with a live demo, but also how easy it is to set up a, a proof of concept with Netscope.
Yes, so Nesco Precision Site is the first phase of safe cloud enablement. By providing visibility into your entire organization, you can establish a baseline risk assessment for your cloud application usage. But how do you get started with Nesco Risk Insight? Well, the first thing you should do is send an email to Nesco or to us, Exclusive Networks, to request access to the Nesco Risk Insight tenant. Together, we will take a look at different use cases you want to address. Next, you simply have to upload some logs to Nesco and you can get started with Nesco Risk Insights. With those logs, Nesco can identify all cloud applications that are being used on your network, assess your enterprise readiness of SaaS and EaaS, and help you mitigate risk. You will have access to detailed information regarding to cloud services, as well as some insights about user activities. You'll also be able to create some reports and generate some reports. And finally, maybe the most important part, based on what Nesco Risk Insight can show you the information it provides, you can act. For example, you can redefine unsanctioned or sanctioned applications. You can start blocking or restricting access to specific applications for specific users, or even assess your risk based on the CCI, the Cloud Confidence Index Score. As Stan mentioned previously, we have our Nesco support most of the e-vendors, meaning that you can upload network logs to Nesco and use predefined parsers to parse those logs. You can use logs originating from different devices, such as an enterprise web proxy, a next generation firewall, or even a router. You can upload the logs using direct upload functionality if the logs are less than 20 gigabytes. And for larger environments where the log files exceed 20 gigabytes, you can upload your logs securely to Nesco using SFTP the Secure Fire Transport Protocol. Other deployment options are also supported by Nesco. So for example, you can use an on-premise Nesco VM appliance with a log parser, or you can send logs directory to Nesco Cloud using the inline solution. And this will provide you some much more detailed information. And we highly recommend you to using decrypted logs, UTM logs if available, over a period of one to four weeks. So as I mentioned for our demo, we used a firewall to export those logs. So we have uh, exported one day of those firewall logs and then uploaded <coughs> those logs to Netscale Cloud. We use the direct upload functionality to upload those logs because our logs were less than 20 gigabytes. When we uploaded the logs, we used a predefined log parser. In our case, it was a Fortinet firewall called the FortiGate. So we were able to parse the logs using the predefined log parsers available on Netscope. Once Netscope has access to your logs, parse the logs, it can analyze and summarize the logs and provide you detailed insight. And let's take a look at that. So let's dive into the demo. The first thing I would like to show you here is um, the dashboard of the Nesco Risk Insight platform. Here you can have a couple of useful information, such as the summary of how many applications are being used inside my organization, as well as how many users, and some insights about network traffic, such as how many uploads or downloads, or even how many sessions are being established for each application. We can also have a look at the top application being used in our organization, as well as the application based or ordered uh, based on the CCL, the cloud confidence level. As you can see, we have five CCL cloud confidence levels from excellence going to poor. The idea is that applications that have been categorized as excellent or high are considered applications that are enterprise ready. The other applications, medium, low or poor, are considered as non-enterprise ready. And what is cool is, what, what's cool here is if you are interested in, for example, the applications that have been categorized as being poor or a poor CCL, you can basically click on the chart here and you will be redirected to an application page when, where you will have some more details about the application and the usage of the application. The last thing I would like to show you here on the homepage 
is the widget where you can see the difference between sanctioned and unsanctioned application. And at this moment, you can see we only have one sanctioned application. Let's take a look at an example here. So let's imagine you would like to know more about the applications. I can click here on the number of applications. In our organization, 19 different cloud applications have been identified. And here you can see a nice page with an overview of, again, the usage of this application, how many users are using the application, and the network inside as well. We can see, for example, that the iCloud Drive application has been categorized as a cloud storage application. And if I do click on that application, I will have some more insights about the application, as well as some information about the application itself. So maybe a link to the website or where the headquarters are located, and even a brief summary of the application itself. You can see also here on this page, we have the CCI score that is available, so the Cloud Confidence Index score. And for the iCloud Drive, it is 54. 54 is not that high, so we can say that iCloud Drive is considered a non-enterprise ready application. And if we do click on that icon here, we have some more details about why the application is considered non-enterprise ready. The first thing we can see here is all the activities that can be performed inside the application. For example, a create, delete, or download operation. We also see a summary and a link to the terms of use of that application. At the top right, we can have information about the GDPR readiness. So here we can see that iCloud, iCloud Drive is not that GDPR readiness because it is medium. And we can also have some information regarding the users. But the most important part, personally here, is at the bottom of the page. We have the seven categories that Stan mentioned before, so the seven areas that are used to calculate this CCI score, and together they are covering more than 40 security attributes. So let's take a look at one of those examples here. So under certificates and standards, we can see what compliance certificates the application have. We can see those are all the certificates that an application can have, and the only certificate that in, in our case, the iCloud Drive has is Trust Arc. And maybe this is something that is not that important for your organization. Maybe you are not that strict on compliance certification. So you can change the importance here as the importance here as well. As you see, if I change the importance, the score of the CCI will change as well. The last thing I would like to show you here on this CCI tab, and that's really a nice feature, is you can compare your application with different applications. So let's try to compare iCloud with, for example, Microsoft OneDrive. Here, I can have a look at the nice comparison between both applications. You can also see that OneDrive has a much better CCI score, and there's also some information available regarding licenses, licensing and subscriptions. If I scroll down to the bottom, we can go to the certificates and standards category tab that I showed you previously. And here we can see the difference between OneDrive and iCloud Drive. So for instance, here, uh, OneDrive is supporting a much more compliant certification, such as HIPAA, NIST, and PCI DES. Another cool feature I would like to show you here is the reports tab. So you can create or generate some reports based on just some reports or use the template library. One of the examples I would like to show you is a report we generated about application usage. So we can have a nice overview of all applications that are being used inside our organization, how many sessions being established, how many users. You can also have a look at what kind of application are being used. So are they considered unsanctioned? Maybe they are considered as enterprise application. Um, and we can also have a look at how many bytes are being uploaded or downloaded to those applications. And here they are compared to the CCI and the CCL. So we can see here that about 50% of the applications that we are using um, in our organization are being used to upload some files. And 50% of the applications are enterprise ready. However, we can still see that 
we have about 40% of applications being used that are considered non-enterprise ready, and we can see a lot of traffic being uploaded to those applications. All right, so thanks for that overview. Uh, the thing that surprised me was, um, these are actually my firewall logs from home for 24 hours, and we already saw uh, 18 applications. So imagine in your environment, how many applications you will see in your corporate environment. So I think really Risk Insights is a very good driver for a customer who is thinking about the cloud journey and the cloud security journey, but is still uh, reserved in, okay, do I really need it? Because if you run this report on the logs that, you, that he will provide, he will be baffled to see how many applications they're using, how many applications they're using they didn't know about, um, and how to provide an alternative, make sure they control it, make sure they use the, all the right compliance uh, C, uh, or, or applications that are compliant. So this is really a driver for the user to go to Netscope uh, and, and yeah, go further with their maturity and their cloud adoption. So this is the thing we prepared today. It's uh, like I mentioned before, it's quick and dirty. If, uh, if you have any questions, please do ask. Um, you can ask them now or later on. Uh, and then you can just uh, contact me. If it's technical, I will just relay to the, uh, the right people within the team. If it's uh, commercial or you want to start with your skin sites, uh, just let us know. So uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, again, if you have any questions, you can just now put them in the chat. Uh, We're happy to answer them. And if not, I wish you a good day uh, and enjoy your weekend. We'll, be, we'll stay online for another five minutes, so feel free to ask questions. Okay, so we got our first questions about how long does it take uh, to import them? Well, first of all, it depends on your upload speeds. Uh, but once your logs are uploaded, it takes like one hour for Netscope to process and parse everything, and you will see the results. And from the moment it's been parsed, you can also run your reports. Uh, so it's quite easy to set up proof of concept. It goes very fast. We just need those logs uploaded, and then you're good to go. Of course, in a very large environment, uh, we don't use direct upload. We will use a VM uh, of Netscope to actually parse it on the appliance itself, and then we uh, connect to the clouds and then you have your logs uh, or your insights available there. Good question, thank you. We have a question, can this work on live data? Yes, it can. Um, this is not based on log files, but we can also, again, if it's a VM is in, in line or spam port, we can also do this live. Hmm. Subscribe. Yes. So, we have a question about someone who asked, can we just subscribe for the information configuration of CCI? Um, it's a very good question. I will uh, take that up with Nesco because I'm not sure if that's a uh, possibility, but I will come to you later on with, that with the answer to that question. Well, through uh, Nesco Risk Insight as well as the Nesco Cloud Platform. So there you can use CCI, but indeed we need to check if is a subscription available only for CCR. All right, I think those were the questions. Um, so thanks again for joining us, and uh, until next time, enjoy your weekend. Bye, guys.